Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by the great Teddy Atlas. Today's episode is going to be a discussion on uh, Andy Ruiz uh, in a bunch of different topics. We're going to talk about Andy Ruiz and some of the preparation that Teddy did in consideration for potentially training him. We're going to talk about Charles Martin and the upcoming potential fight between Ruiz and Martin. We actually recorded this on a previous episode, but because it went so long, we wanted to give it its own episode because there's some really good in-depth analysis here. Before we get into things, quick reminder, today's episode is brought to you by Teddy's audiobook, Atlas. Uh, from the streets to the ring, a son's struggle to become a man. Check it out on audible.com. And uh, Teddy, let's get into this. Well, let's move on to some of the other ones. And there's one that I, I just want to mention it and we'll come back to it because I know we're going to do something regarding um, this this fighter uh, with a whole separate episode. And that's Andy Ruiz and Charles Martin. Um no secret, Andy Ruiz and his camp reached out to you to discuss the possibility of you training him. Like I said, we're going to get into this. Um, you know, it's not something that you would normally talk about, I know, but since it was out there in the media and Steve Kim did confirm with you that they had, in fact, reached out, we'll talk about some of what went into what, what went into that and what some of the considerations are and were before you work with Andy Ruiz or any fighter for that matter. But talk to me about the potential matchup of Ruiz and Martin. Charles Martin, Andy Ruiz. Well, first of all, let me let me address what you just brought up. Get that out of the way. Um, you know, I've, as I've said before, it was out there. Different uh, responsible uh, people reported on it, whether it was Kevin Aioli, whether it was Steve Kim, and uh, you know, whoever, Mike Woods. I mean, there's responsible people out there. There's some that aren't, but there's there's plenty that are. Uh, they they report on, and I was quiet about it because I felt that it was, you know, it was my obligation not to really talk about it. I don't like to talk about things until you know that they're going to happen. I don't want just to put stuff out there. So I was, to, but when they found out somebody from somewhere, obviously not from here, uh, talked about that. They had contacted me, Ruiz's people, about potentially training them. I'm not going to lie. I didn't go into it until later. But at first I just said, yeah, they contacted me. But there's nothing to report. The, the only thing to report that I verified from the people asking questions uh, and having heard you know, from obviously somebody giving them that information the only thing I verified was, yeah, there was a conversation, and the way I left it off was they'd have to come to New York before the conversation could be advanced. You know, there's no advancement of it until I meet with him and his people and talk to him and see where he's at and work with him in the gym and uh, see whether or not he wanted to work with me, quite frankly, and I wa if I want to work with him. Learn something about each other and show them what I had in mind for the for the trek that we would take um you know for the work that it would take to you know to do this successfully that means making changes and again i i would want to know if he's on board i want to know where he is mentally uh emotionally uh so it, it would have been a couple of days in new york to f go through those those things and they were going to call me, and the call never came. So um, if they had called back, I did like any person that considers themselves a professional, you know, and is prepared. Part of being a pro is preparation. Have a plan. So before he was even going to come here, when they called me back, I had figured out what I would do with him. I had put together probably about eight pages of just the things that I felt he needed to work on and I would have to work on with him to correct from a technical standpoint. Um, what my philosophy would be, what my objective would be, uh, you know, what my plan would be, what I would expect from him. So I wrote it all out. I wrote out all the corrections, <laughs> the things I needed. I thought he needed to correct as a fighter in the ring because it wasn't just about weight. 
It was also about teaching. It was also about improving in certain areas. You know, that's that's we all right make a big deal about rightfully so, but about him going up to 283 pounds, whatever it was, when he fought the rematch with Joshua. People make mistakes. He made a mistake. All right. And he went up, he was too heavy. And we blamed everything on that. But we forgot that he had a loss early in his career against Joseph Parker where he wasn't 283 pounds. Why did he lose that fight? So I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at that, too. And so so there are... There's room for improvement in certain areas. Otherwise, why the hell you, why the hell you need me? If if you only need me for weight loss, you know, call Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm being really. I know, I'm, in a, I know. I'm in a serious business, Ken, and and part of it. So for me, I I wrote up these pages, and. I put it together, and if they call me, you know I'm not sophisticated with this stuff. So I was going to say, okay, give me your email. I will go to my foundation, charity foundation office, and ask my my very important person down there that runs my foundation to scan it. I heard of that. You scan things. That <laughs> that I heard of. Scan it, and then email it to them so they could at least get an idea of what I had in mind before we took it to the next stage. And that phone call never came. <coughs> so, on your suggestion, on your th- bringing this up, I made a decision. I said, okay. I I, I don't think this is going to happen. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a call from him uh, in an hour. But at this point, it's really not about waiting by a phone. <clears throat> it doesn't make me better or this or worse. But I don't wait by phones. I don't believe you should. I believe that if you have confidence in what you do, belief in what you do, legitimacy in what you do, you don't wait by the phone. That if people believe in you, then they they make contact. And you don't, you know, it's too serious a business to posture, you know, to play games. It's too serious. And one of the things also in my mind was if I did train him, the reason I wanted to meet him for a couple of days, Ken, it wasn't about one fight. The first fight probably won't be the hardest. The next fight will be the harder one. First one might be, but it probably won't be. Probably give him one to get back. And then the next one will be hard, probably. It's not written in stone. But for me, it's not about winning one fight. It's not about dropping 20 pounds, 25 pounds, 30 pounds. It's about changing your lifestyle, making a decision and a commitment for the rest of your life. For me to be successful, this kid has to be successful beyond one fight. He has to be successful for the rest of his life. Because what? You win a title, you go up to 300. Remember what happened to Buster Douglas? God bless him. Yep. But what happened to Buster Douglas after he beat Tyson? You know, he, he made all that money. He lost the title right away to, uh, to, to the great event, the Holyfield. And then he went up to 400 pounds and he went into a diabetic coma. Yep. Thank God he didn't die. Thank God he didn't die. He's a good person, Buster Douglas. And he do, he works with kids and he does stuff. That, but he he came back after that diabetic coma and he got knocked out by Lou Severis. Normally, and taking nothing away from Lou Severis, he's a fighter. And he gets in the ring. Not everyone could do that. But Lou Severis doesn't normally beat Buster Douglas. But after, after going up to 400 pounds, then he took the weight off and he went, damage was done. And like I said, forget about that it, okay, he lost his title to Holyfield and all that, and it changes his legacy and everything else, and it ends his career. But he could have he could have shortened his life. He, he could have never had a chance to be with his kids anymore, to, to, to live out his life. And for me, that you have a responsibility. If you have a guy 
that is vulnerable in this way, you deal with those vulnerabilities. That's part of your job. You deal with those flaws. Part of his flaw, Ruiz, is food. It happens. He's not alone. He's not alone in there. It's almost like being a drug addict. You get an addiction. Like you don't have a resolve. He's got a great resolve. He gets in the ring. He gets up off the floor against Joshua and he wins the title. Unbelievable. Give him all the credit in the world. Unbelievable. But he doesn't have a resolve when it comes to other things. A discipline when it comes to other things. And those other things can do more than just cost him the loss of one fight. It could cost him his life. And to me, I'm not trying to be a life coach. I'm a trainer, I'm, but I believe in what I am. I believe in what I believe. So for me, my job would be change this guy's mentality, change his habits, change his way of living, where he could be successful, period. You know what successful means? Not winning one fight. Successful! That he could go on with his life and have control over his life. And that's what I just said. That's, that's where it's coming. And that's, more, that's, that's heavier. That's more serious. Yeah. That's why I needed to talk to him. That's why I wrote eight pages to explain some of that. Just so he would have an inkling of some of that. So now that it doesn't, and you brought up the suggestion, can we look at that? And at first I thought, no, because it would be wrong. I just thought it might it would be wrong. But then I thought about it and I thought of it's not wrong if you're not doing it for the wrong reason. I just de I decided that on this show since they never caught us, I never gave a chance to give the papers to them. I'm going to release the papers. I'm going to show them. Rob's going to you know, he's going to he's going to film them obviously and we we're, we're going to show them. And the reason why I'm doing it, there's two reasons. So they could see it. So even though I'm not going to work with them probably, at least if it could help them this much, it could help this much, I'm good. I'm good for that. I, I'm, I, you don't have to get paid to, get help, to give help. Doesn't always have to, it doesn't always have to be connected to that. So if it could help them, I, I think he's a lost kid in some ways. I think he's a good kid. I think that there's something special in him to be able to win the world title the way he did it. So if this could help him just a little bit, this would be my way of giving it to him instead of giving it to him in a private way that I would have. Yeah. And it helps our show. It allows to, and there's nothing wrong with it. I thought about it. I said, am I doing something wrong? Am I doing something that's that's betraying something? No. Because I, they never knew I was, I never said I, I was doing these papers. They don't even know about it. And again, if I had gotten a call, they would have had it and that would have been the end of it. But it didn't happen. So now either these papers never get seen by anybody, and it's not a big deal, but it could be something that could help them. So they never get seen or he gets to see them this way. And it's interesting to our audience. That the audience yep. can can just see what goes into when you're a trainer, you're a teacher. That that's really that's really that's really at the core of what you do. You teach. You try to improve, and it gives me, in my mind, a chance for the audience, our audience, which I'm grateful to, to to see how we think, to see what boxing's about. That's not just about going in there and over, you know, throwing punches till the guy goes down. And I know our audience knows that already. But just to show them what else it's about, where the thinking starts with a trainer, what he's thinking about when he's getting ready to commit himself to another fighter, what goes into it, what's the thought process, What's the goal? And this gives me a chance, us a chance, to share that with the audience, to let them be aware of some things they might not have been aware of before in this business. I think that's a, I don't know, do you agree? 
Oh, I agree 100%. That's why that's why I wanted to do this. And um, with that, I want to leave that here because we're going to do a whole episode on this and we're going to get into all of these details and go through the papers. And no, listen, I just screwed thoroughly. it up. But this we just did it. Because, see, I didn't <laughs> think you were going to... I didn't know you were going to bring it up. And I thought if we did it, we were going to do it. You, We had talked about it. You had mentioned it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. And if we did it, we were going to do it separately in its own episode. You know? Yeah. I'm not doing it yeah. again. I'm not going through this again. I'm not going to say all okay. what I just said. So this is it. I, again, you... Uh, you screwed up. You brought it up. You know me. I can't. Once you bring something up to me, I'm, I'm gonna react to it. Yeah, you're right. And, and listen, it's my fault. It's my fault too because I I reacted to it right away. Um, That's fine. No, but listen, we we just did it. That it was gonna be. Rob is the uh, mad scientist over here, and um, and we. You know, mad scientists, uh, their their hair comes out sometimes, and they they lose, they get crazy because people around them uh, that don't think on the wavelengths that they think can get them crazy. But uh, he'll figure it out. He'll figure yeah. it out. He'll take his scissors out and his his knives out. He'll borrow a knife from from some of our great fight fans out there that like a fighter that I they might think I'm knocking and they take their knives out to to dice me a little bit. Uh he'll borrow one of those knives. Can we talk a little bit about what's in the papers? I think I just did. But more if I gotta talk more specifically, it's it's what I expect what I believe he needs a, a change of mind. Like I mentioned before, you could be addicted to drugs, you could be addicted to gambling, you could be addicted to a lot of things, to food. Mm -hmm. And to you have to change the pattern. It's not just a matter of disciplining yourself for an eight-week, nine-week camp, but you have to change your lifestyle, your way of thinking. And and also, if you're, if you're dependent on your body to make a living, right, Ken? Yeah. Which fighters do, right? You're dependent on your body to make a living. And you're coming in at a weight that compromises your chance to do that. There's something wrong. It's, it's Yeah, it, it's a lack of discipline and maybe an addiction to food. Okay. So if you're going to change that, you got to change the environment. You got to change the way of thinking. It's much more than just me being with them for, for two weeks. It's much. It's much more than that. Uh, we could yep. turn that thing, whatever. And uh, probably should have done that before we started. But I, I like sounds. I like phones. <laughs> I like it, it. It's it's good. I I like Christmas music too, you know. Because <laughs> no, I do it because it has bells and it 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 has uh, it has a lot of sounds. See, Rob is a genius when it comes to filming phones. <laughs> so so he, for me with the potential of working with Ruiz I again it, it's if you're compromising yourself by coming into weight okay we could blame it on lack of discipline but there has to be a psychological component to it too Ken where you're under a lot of pressure. Getting in that ring is a tough thing. And maybe, maybe you're setting up an excuse in a way that you're not even aware of. In a subconscious way. Because 75% of boxing and being successful, and in anything, is mental. You have guys out there that were just as good athletically as Michael Jordan. Yeah. I know Michael Jordan was a beast. I know it. But there were guys that were just as good, if not better than him athletically, but not mentally. And a lot of those guys never made it. A lot of those guys are still on the streets. They never made it. There's, there's plenty of guys that were better athletically than Larry Bird. <laughs> right? Your man. Your man from yep. that place that starts with a B. 
the, the best. Great city of Boston. Now, you know, without Tom Brady. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's Tom Brady? Uh, there, there, perfect, <laughs> beautiful. There's that Bostonian uh, loyal <laughs> attitude. Soon as he's not with us, who? What? Next man what? up. Let's what? go. What? Who? So, <laughs> what I'm saying is, but Larry Bird was mentally better than so many people under pressure. He didn't ever give himself an excuse to lose. All I'm saying is that when you're in this kind of waters that we're talking about, what I'm talking about, it gets it gets tough. It gets deep. It gets murky. You got to understand it. And you have to explore it. You have to be aware of it. Otherwise, you ain't going to get better. So to me, Ruiz coming in the way he did uh, the most important part, yeah, it was because he made money. I get it. Yeah, because he wanted to eat and lack of discipline. But he was heavy before that too. There, There's more to it. You got to find out what it is. There's more to it. That's what I'm talking about. And that's why I'm not quick to say yes to a fighter because there is a lot involved. I want to see if I'm going to have cooperation with believing in what I believe and going down that road. Mm -hmm. So you could you could be in a situation where you're undermining yourself, where you're giving yourself, again, not consciously but subconsciously, you're giving yourself a reason to lose. You're giving yourself a reason to lose where, where you, well, if you lose, you know, it's tough to lose because people can point a finger. You aren't good enough. You suck. It's tough. It's tough. You're naked out there. You're vulnerable out there. But now you have to do, oh, maybe if he was in better shape, he would have won. Oh, so maybe, maybe he's better than the other guy. But he just, he just, he just wasn't in as good a shape. But if he was, he would have beat the guy. So it saves you. It protects you. It gives you an excuse. It gives you cover. If we're going to be the best in the world or whatever we do, we can't have cover. We can't have cover. Cover is just an alias for excuse. So those are the things when you ask about the papers and jokingly we could make a joke and say uh, remember that movie we're, we're talking so much about these papers now my god remember that movie the Valachi papers <laughs> do you remember that oh yeah joseph Valachi, yeah. uh first person to testify before congress about the existence of the mafia and break the omerta and code of silence yeah. and testified yeah. against um Vito Genovese, who tried to allegedly tried to have him killed in uh, prison, so um, Valachi killed the supposed hitman, which allegedly wasn't actually the hitman, and they sentenced him to life. So in exchange to try to lighten his sentence, he testified before Congress uh, about the existence of the mafia, first time ever, and uh, became obviously a big deal back in. Now these papers have nothing to do with rats. <laughs> exactly. It's got nothing to do with testifying. Yeah, with rats. But the Valachi papers, we we'll call these the Ruiz papers, whatever. Yeah. But uh, nothing to do with rats. But, mm -hmm. but it does have a lot to do with finding out things. In the Valachi papers, they found out things about the mob, the mafia, right, that they never knew. This has to do with finding out things about the psychological terrain the psychological, you know, environment of boxing. Yep. Of things that you normally might not have found out about or known about or thought about. So, it, again, it's you ask what it's about. That's what it's about. It's about those things. It's also about how you can become better technically, the things you need to work on technically to be the best fighter that I thought he could be. Um, you know, the funny thing was he lost to, and this is what's in the papers, he lost to Joshua in the rematch and everyone blamed it on the weight. 
But then getting ready for the possibility of working with him, I did my work. I looked at tape. So I looked at the tape of the fight against against uh, Parker Parker that he lost. Guess what? Other than the weight, you might as well be looking at the same fight. Parker fought on the outside. Joshua fought on the outside. Parker boxed. Joshua boxed. Parker used his legs. Joshua used his legs. And guess what? Ruiz, who was lighter in the Parker fight, much lighter, he didn't know how to cut the ring down. He didn't use the jab to get in enough. When he got in, he didn't stay in there. He, 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 he was, he was one-dimensional in his approach. I mean, all the things that he did to lose the Parker fight, he did the same things to lose the Joshua fight. But everyone said, oh, it was because of the weight. I'm going to say that even if he came in lighter after what I saw doing my work, doing my research, which is what I'm supposed to do, I would say that he still would have lost the fight and nothing to do with the weight because of what he didn't know technically how to deal with a guy boxing in the way that he was on the outside. So those things are addressed in the in the uh, Falachi papers, Ruiz papers. Well, Ruiz would be well served to just even listen to this episode because... Now that you've pointed that out, I'm sure that his next opponents, uh, in this case, possibly Charles Martin, will look to do the same exact thing and stay on the outside and box from distance. So it'll be interesting to see what, if any, adjustments he makes if he's aware. I mean, he's in there, so he should realize that Parker and, and Anthony Joshua beat him in the same fashion with the same technique and style. Oh, I mean, listen, you say that, and you're. You say that he should know. A lot of people should know a lot of things. <laughs> That's fair. But but yet they don't know. Yet they don't know. Because maybe that, they. I was saying that in reference to how you said Canelo knows and Triple G know. They both know what happened. They're both in there. So when you have two losses, you should be able to look back. Only jo- only Ruiz will know. A lot of this. people don't want to look at the truth. That's true. A lot of people don't want to. They really don't. Yeah. That's very true. And that's that's why a lot of times that someone doesn't want to work with a guy like me. Because guess what? I got a secret for you. I'm going to make you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't do nothing if you don't know what you're doing wrong. That's right. I can't help you if you don't know what you're doing wrong. If If you don't confess to it, so to speak, if you don't acknowledge it. If it's not shown to you, and if you're not willing to change, I can't help you. And I'm not going to go in there just to get a payday. I'm going in there to win, to make a difference. Oh, I know firsthand exactly what goes into it, having been in camp with you for eight weeks. And um, that would have been my biggest concern about Andy Ruiz working with you, is would he be able to accept that kind of um, tough love criticism, however you want to describe it, but it is not... There is nothing nice or friendly about being in camp, at least not in a Teddy Atlas camp. It was business, business, all day business. And um, it's a serious business. Oh, hell. When it's all said and done, it's a serious business. You were there. You saw how serious it was when we lost to Better BF and we did everything right. Yep. And you still could lose. Yep. He did everything right, my fighter. Yep. So, but it's a serious business. So you better treat it seriously because it has serious ramifications if you don't. Yep. Well, be interesting to see how this one plays out. Um, Let's move on to some other fights that are coming up. Before we do, let me give a quick shout out to the guys at my bookie. They've been good, loyal sponsors to the show for a long time. Obviously, no sports going on right now, but just want to give those guys a quick thank you and a shout out. MyBookie.ag. They've been really good to us. So um, when we do get back to normal, if you're going to gamble, gamble responsibly and check these guys out. They have a line on everything. All right, Teddy, let's get into this uh, potential Ruiz versus Charles Martin fight, the fight itself. We talked a lot about Andy and um, some of his ongoings, but let's get into the fight itself. Um, Rumored to be happening next, Charles Martin versus Andy Ruiz. What do you think? What should we look for? Well, you got to start with Martin's one loss. He got blown out by Joshua. He was... When I'm not getting into heavy religion stuff here. We all have our beliefs and all our 
different religions, and I respect all of them. And one of the beliefs in the Christianity, the Christian religion, Catholic religion, is that when there was uh, when Jesus was being born, there were signs, and everybody was going to this place in the desert. You know, the Messiah was being born. There were signs that the Messiah was coming. And everybody was bringing gifts. They were bringing gifts to the to the area in the desert for the, for the coming of this Messiah. And I'm saying that he was, Martin was brought as a gift to the Messiah of Joshua. Joshua was the gold medalist. <laughs> Joshua was supposed to be the anointed one. Joshua put 90,000 people into stadiums at Wembley. Joshua looked like a fighter. You know, he, he behaves like a, he's got a great image, great personality, uh, great physique. He, f he hit all the boxes. He checked all the boxes. He's going to be the the Messiah for for boxing, the heavyweight champ, and for the boxing where the Marcus of Queensbury, where boxing started, where the where the rules, the the civilized rules, were first established. London, Marcus of Queensbury rules. So Joshua was that guy, and they brought gifts, and one of the gifts happened to be Charles Martin. I'm I'm I, I'm sorry if Charles is listening. He's saying I, I was a gift. That's what I was. I was an offering, an offering to the to the King, to the Messiah. Yeah, you are, because you won your title. Okay, great. You weren't really ready to stay a champion. You had the right spot. It was a very opportunistic, great opportunity. It was an opportunistic moment. You got the right spot. Look up the name of the guy, that um, Russian name, that Martin won the title from, and look up to see what it was. It was a vacated title, whatever it was. Glaskov, vacant IBF title. There it is. So it's a vacant IBF title against Glaskov. If I remember correctly, Glaskov blew out his knee during the course of the fight. Uh, yeah, in the third round, uh, Martin ended up winning by TKO, but you're right, he blew out his knee in the third. Okay, so... Coming into that fight, coming into that fight that um, Glasgow, though, was 21-0 with one draw. Yeah, yeah, but when you blow out your knee, you become 21-1. and one. Yep. Ken, I got, you know, I got news news memo. You blow <laughs> out the cartilage in your knee, you become 20 one and one when you're 21 and oh. So anyway, Yo. Martin's there. Ukrainian, by the way. Ukrainian, okay. Now, have some great Ukrainian fighters out there, by the way. I mean, tremendous ones. Oh, yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. you go, it was a very fortuitous moment. I mean, Martin's ready. Maybe he would have won the fight anyway. Maybe he would have. I think he was the underdog. But... He wins the fight the way he wins it, and he's the champ, but he's not ready to stay champ. And right away, Joshua's people saw the moment. They saw the writing on the wall. They saw the star, the star in the sky that told them the Messiah was coming. They saw it, and they followed it. They said, okay, we have to pay this Martin, get him in the ring immediately for the title because it's a gift. It's a gift. And again, I'm not trying to knock, I'm putting out the truth from the way I see it, from the way my experience tells me, the way that evidence tells me, proof tells me, facts tell me. I'm not here to gloss something and dress it up to make someone feel good or to make someone feel bad. I'm here to say it for the way it is. Starting to sound like Howard Cosell. Say it the what it is. <laughs> The, what was Howard Cosell when he was on TV? What was his thing? Saying it, uh, he had a mantra. He had his own little 
thing, Howard Cosell. He was the man, too. Uh, saying it like it is. Something like that. Saying it like it is. But was saying it for what it is. And Joshua's people knew what it was. It was an opportunity to grab that title. And they knew that to do it, yeah, you got to get in the ring. But first, you got to get the guy in the ring. So they brought the money. This is Howard Cosell telling it like it is. There it is. I, I, it just sounds cool, you know? <laughs> telling it like it is. <laughs> yep. All right. So now you have the opportunity there. Joshua's people don't have to, you don't have to sketch it out. You don't have to color it out. You know, you don't have to paint it for them. They know what it is. They're going to win this title, get him in the ring. Pay him a lot of money. So Martin, hey, good for him. I think every fighter should get paid. He got paid early in his career, much earlier than most people do because the stars lined up because of the opportunity. And he got paid big money to basically give a title. And listen, I'm not implying he threw the fight. I'm not implying anything like that. But they knew that they would win the title. So they knew they were buying a title in that way. Not buying in a title that was fixed, just that they knew that their guy was definitely going to win the fight. That the other guy wasn't ready to be a champion beyond that one fight. So they paid him a lot of money. They get him in the ring. Bang! Martin's knocked out two rounds. I think it was two rounds, one or two rounds. And Joshua is the champion. So... Where are we now? Martin wasn't ready for that fight. Martin wasn't one of these guys that had a great amateur background. What round was it, Ken? Second. Second round. Martin wasn't a guy that had a great amateur background. He was learning on the job a little bit still. Big guy, big heavyweight, southpaw. So now, now he had to actually start becoming a fighter. So now he starts fighting guys that he didn't fight before Joshua. He didn't fight the, you know, he was fighting all soft guys. He's not the only one who ever did that. His people aren't the first to do that. They were just building his record up and they got a payday. But they weren't fighting the kind of fights to make you a better fighter. Now he had to start fighting real fights a little bit. And now that he's in the real world, where he's got to fight a little bit of real fights, he's gotten a little bit of maturity. There's been a progression, a natural progression just from going through what he's going through. From losing to now having to just fight regular fights and find out what you are. And start facing what you are. And start building towards what you want to be. And he's, he's, he's gotten better. Not great, but just through the progression of experience, maturity, fighting better fighters... Now he's starting to become better. And he has gotten better. He's matured. He's progressed in the business. He's not what he was before. What he was before, Ruiz would have knocked him out just like Joshua knocked him out. He's a little better now. He's a lot better now. So how do I see the other side? Well, Ruiz, it's up to him. But what he is, whether he comes in a little heavy or he comes in a few pounds lighter, whatever it is, Ruiz is more mature. Ruiz is more experienced. Ruiz has already shown that he can win at the next level where Martin hasn't done that yet. So I have to favor, at first blush, I have to favor Ruiz in this fight. I have to favor, then you have to calculate the other parts. You know, how he comes back off of his disappointing, maybe embarrassing loss, he being Ruiz, to Joshua, what he does with himself physically, mentally, emotionally. Is he hungry again? And that's not a pun when I say is he hungry again because of his obvious reasons. That's not a pun. But when you make, when you make $15, $16 million, it is a question. Yep. Are you still hungry? Are you still hungry? Some people say, oh, Teddy, you know, the tax man takes a lot of that money. Yes. You sp those Rolls Royces cost a lot of money. <laughs> yes. Yes. But that doesn't mean that everyone 
treats money and looks at money the same. He, you, some people get satisfied with maybe a couple hundred thousand. Some people are satisfied with a million, a lot of money. Some people are not satisfied with 10 million, 15 million. So that's up to, that's going to be figured out. You're going to find that out. Ruiz is going to find that out. His people are going to find that out. But again, at first blush, I like Ruiz because he's more experienced. He's more mature. He's proven that he can win at that level. And he's more advanced. He's more advanced. He had a better amateur career. He had a more extensive pro career. He's more advanced at this point in his athletic life than Martin is. Yeah. So the way I break the fight down, Martin taller. A lot of guys are taller than Ruiz. Martin taller. He's a big southpaw. He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to win the fight on the outside. Yeah. And and he doesn't show me that he's got great legs, but if he's got a little bit of of wheels. If he can spin those wheels a little bit, he should spin them a little bit because we already see that twice, not once, twice Ruiz didn't deal well with somebody who could spin their wheels. He lost to Parker, who fought with his legs on the outside, and he lost to Joshua in the rematch, who fought with his legs on the outside. So Martin has the physique, the height, the length, the size, to be able to fight on the outside. How well can he fight on the outside? Can he spin the wheels a little bit on the outside? That's what he needs to do. If he can do that, he gives, puts himself in the best position to win that fight against Ruiz. Ruiz is going to want to get close. Martin allows you that opportunity. Joshua was allowed that opportunity. Again, Martin's better than he was when he got knocked out by Joshua. But... There's still some remnants. There's still some hangover. There's still some leftover of that Martin where he'll stand a little tall. Where if you get inside, he's an inviting target. It's like getting close to a skyscraper. There's a lot of windows you can break, Ken. Mm -hmm. You get close to a skyscraper, you say, wow. At first, you get intimidated. You say, holy cow. That's a big freaking building. But then all of a sudden you start picking up a couple rocks and you start chucking them. You say, yeah, it's a big building, but it's got windows. <laughs> I can break windows. <laughs> I can break windows. And that's how you approach that's how you approach Martin. You get close and you say, I can break windows. And I can land those big looping shots. The same way I did, I being Ruiz, against Joshua the first time. Yeah. It's very interesting that way. Joshua Martin needs to do what Joshua did in the second fight to beat Ruiz. Yeah. Ruiz needs to do what he did in the first fight against Joshua. Get in with the taller guy and break windows. Yep. There's a possibility for both sides. If you, put a, if you put me in a position where I have to pick somebody now, I pick Ruiz. I'm with you. Because the last left off, last we checked, He was the better guy for the reasons I said. Yeah. All right, Teddy, that was great. And with that, we'll leave it there for today. Once again, thanks to uh, thanks, Teddy, for doing this. Uh, Check out his audio book, Atlas from the streets to the ring. A son struggled to become a man available on uh, Amazon and the audio version on audible.com. Guys, thanks for being with us. Appreciate all the support. 